What's up, YouTube? It's been a while, and we need to talk. First and foremost, look at this view. Anyways, I forgot something in the car. There's always something in the car that we forget, right? It's part of life. A lot has happened in the last five months since I did last video. And you'll see snippets of that right now. But today, I'm with my little brother and uh, we are gonna go try to find some surf perch that we could take home and catch and cook. And I'm gonna use a later video uh, over the summer actually. It's like my, the last video that I took before going on hiatus of my mom cooking up some surf perch. So yeah, today we're gonna try to stock up our freezer our white foams right they're going out to the distance like that one you got one here with the surfers over there and then you got one way over there okay i wonder what's the end of that rainbow sinker going to a B to protect the knot going to a snap swivel with like a one foot leader going to a bait holder hook and the bait of our the bait choice is this thing right here sandworms and I use the camo color now once you find a place you want to fish the first thing you want to do is cast as far as you can usually past the third breaker. You're gonna have to think of the surf like mountains and valleys. The surf breaks on the mountains and the fish usually chill out in the valleys, right? So you cast out, you're gonna reel in slowly, uh, probably an inch every second. And every time you feel that there is weight on the end of your line, you wanna lift your rod tip up because that's the wave trying to take your bait out and sometimes you could get buried in sand or rocks or debris and so when you lift your tip um, it brings that bait out into the surface of the substrate now probably the hardest part about surf fishing is differentiating whether you got some rocks or you got a fish because you're gonna feel some tugs on your line and sometimes it could just be sand hitting your sinker but when you feel like erratic usually that is a fish and you, you want to set that hook nice and firm you don't have to set it too hard but have a good hook set and reel that thing in oh fish on fish on oh i think he let go Oh, he was on there. Oh, we're still on. We're still on. Wee hee! Wee hee! It's on. Here he is. Alright, let's bring it closer. So, check it out, guys. This is a calico. This is a calico. I learned this the hard way. Because calicos have one 
long, I uh, would call this dorsal fin. Red tails have um, two, right? They're broken apart. So we've got one here and then one on the other side. Oh man, I missed this one. I got another one. It's another calico. Good size, size in my hand. You got one? You got seaweed? Dang. So another rule of thumb is that the birds over there usually know where the fish is or know where the bait is. This fish eat worms, those birds eat worms. The birds know where the worms are, therefore they know where the fish are. Fishing logic. Another calico, hand size. Another one. Yeah, yeah, bring it in. No, come on, don't let it. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! You go. Let's see what you got done. Oh, you fouled hooked them. He came back for more. Oh, you got a walleye, bro. It looks like a walleye. Yeah, it's a walleye. Do I still put it in the... Thing? Yeah, yeah, it's a walleye surf perch. You're good. Put it in. My brother got one. But there's got to be more up there, so let's go. Hey, but was, it was, it's close, huh? They're pretty close in, huh? Found one. another one this one's another calico ah, filling up my freezer tonight boys That guy is like at least 15 inches. <laughs> good day. Good day. It's a good day. <laughs> you know, my brother is never into fishing. But since he got that big one, look how look at how he's how he's concentrating. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Another one. Bring it in, Don! <laughs> Go bring it in before the wave shake it! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my brother's on the money, man. Good job. Dang, that's another good size calico. Now you're just reeling in the big ones today. All right, guys. Uh, we caught about eight fish. I caught about I caught about five. You caught about three, but you got big, the biggest one. Out of these puppies right here. There's a really big barred surf perch in there. It's like the biggest barred surf perch I've ever seen. My brother caught that one, so. Great day. I'm gonna go for a challenging one. I'm gonna use a shine pointer. See uh, if you can reel in anything with that one. Shiner. I think it's a really good one. I'm not waiting until the, the wave besides. And I'm gonna cast the crap out of it. 
All right, go back, go back, go back, go back, go back, go back, go back. Start my retrieval. Do a medium one. Oh, oh. my goodness. What's that? Be nice and slow with a little couple of twitches. Kinda get lucky here. Maybe I'll get a big old Sir Perch or maybe a striper. Who knows? Or probably seaweed or nothing. Alright. Call it a day. What's up guys? So this is our catch. Look at the size of this bard, man. Look, that's my hand. It's like two of my hands. No lie, look at that bard surf perch. That's two of my hands. Oh my goodness. Wow. How'd you feel, little bro? That's the biggest one. Pretty good. Hey, what's up, guys? I'm here with my mom. Ma, what are we making today, Ma? Uh, I'm making sabao soup. <laughs> I'm making soup. So, yeah, sabao is uh, Filipino for soup. Mm -hmm. And we are uh, going to be cooking our uh, surf purse that we just caught uh, in the afternoon. So uh, hang with us, it's gonna be awesome. My mom's got this pot and it's simmering. All right guys, so this is the ingredients for um, our fish soup. So my mom cleaned the fish. I would love to take credit for cleaning it, but now she did it. Um, and she salted the fish. Okay, and what we have here is a uh, walleye surf perch. That's the walleye right there, so the big old eye. This is a barred surf perch, and we have three of those in this container. We got salt and pepper. And this is the cool thing I wanted to show you guys. So this is a very clean dish. There's really not a lot of things that go into this, um, except these ingredients right here. And we got a uh, tomato, and these are San Marzano's. We got some lemongrass, and my mom wraps it upon itself. We got an onion, and it's stock. And this thing right here is sweet potato leaves, okay? And all this, all these ingredients right here, all found in the garden in the backyard. Yeah, so this is homegrown, homegrown except this thing right here. Okay, this is not from my backyard. This is from my from my aunt's backyard. And this is moringa leaves. only smell that right now it's so it's so gingery it's so smells so clean with that lemongrass oh it's gonna be delicious The sweet potato leaves is probably the most interesting thing in this dish. Ooh, I dropped it. Check it out. Look at the shape of this thing. And so we use this kind of like spinach, right? We, we, we put it in at the very last moment and blanch it. It gives it a, a, a nice texture.
try it, Bubs. Mmm. Yummy? Do you like it? Yummy. And this boy is super picky too. But I'm Yummy. telling you guys, he's dancing on a table. <laughs> this food is super clean, super fresh, healthy, delicious. Mm. You like it? Oh. <laughs> There's the fish right here. <laughs> the flavor is very mild. It's not that fishy at all. It's not like mackerel. It's not oily. Most of the time, you're tasting the soup, the infused ginger, tomato. Uh, lemongrass, most of the time you're tasting that. And then the moringa leaves and the sweet potato leaves add some texture to the soup, gives it some crunchiness. It is absolutely delicious. The meat is, this meat is very delicate. And uh, it's, it's, it, just, it just melts in your mouth. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Uh, this is our first catch and cook video. And uh, Giant thanks to my mother-in-law for cooking us some nice fish soup, Filipino style. So uh, if you like this video, you like this content, please subscribe, share, and like. Thank you very much, and uh, we'll catch you later.